Grace to you in Advent, peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I would lay on your hearts for tonight comes to us from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So far, God's holy word. Dear friends in Christ, fellow redeemed, have you ever heard of the theory of spontaneous generation? It is the hypothetical process by which living organisms develop from non-living matter, life coming from non-life. As ridiculous as it sounds, the ancient Greeks actually put a lot of stock into this theory of spontaneous generation. They believed that living things could spontaneously come into being from non-living substances. For example, to create mice, an ancient recipe told us that you would need to get a pair of dirty underwear, I'm serious, dirty underwear, mix it with wheat grain and stir it up in a bucket and leave it open outside. And guaranteed, in 21 days or less, you would have mice. No kidding. <laughs> Likewise, they believed that a piece of meat left out by itself would spontaneously generate maggots. That theory of spontaneous generation actually was generally accepted by the scientific world until the 19th century. It's a long time. When the father of microbiology, Louis Pasteur, disproved it altogether. He replaced it with what he called the Law of Biogenesis, which states in Latin, omne vivum ex viva, which means from life, or all life is from life. In our midweek sermons this Advent season, as I bring you God's message tonight, and Pastor Schaller and Pastor Wilkie come in the next two weeks, we're going to be studying these first 18 verses of John's Gospel with the theme, The Word Became Flesh. And in these five verses before us this evening, it's abundantly evident that the law of biogenesis holds true spiritually as well as physically. Where does physical life come from? Where does spiritual and eternal life come from? Jesus and no one else. The Word who became flesh. The theme of our sermon tonight is, The Word is Life. And near the end of his life, the Apostle John penned this gospel, which begins with these five verses. Unlike the other gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the gospel of John has no introduction. Instead, it starts with this prologue, these 18 verses. And we also know and believe that John wrote this gospel much later than the other Gospels as well, sometime around the year 90 AD. And at that time, John was combating a false teaching that was beginning to creep into the young Christian church. It was led by a group called the Gnostics and by a man by the name of Serinthus, who was teaching that Jesus was not, in fact, God. He was teaching that there was no singular divine essence, that there was no trinity at all. So, if we look closely at John's writings, it's very clear and pretty obvious that he makes a point of emphasis about talking about Jesus' divine nature for this very reason. Our theme is the Word became flesh. And who is the Word? Well, it's pretty clear from the front of your bulletin. There's a picture of the Word becoming flesh right there. And it's very clear from Scripture as well. We read in Revelation 19.13 that the name by which Christ is called is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word become flesh. And here in this opening verse of the Gospel, John starts with the simple words, In the beginning. 
And there really is no more dramatic way than to begin with those three words, because it echoes the first three words of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1. And if you think that's a coincidence, think again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's a very bold way to begin his gospel writing here. John is making this bold statement about the Word's eternal nature. In the beginning, the Word was there. It's a pretty amazing confession to make, especially for John. Imagine if you had known personally that man, Jesus, who is the Word spoken of in this section. And now you've come to recognize and confess that this person who you had spent three years following around, who you had seen eat and drink, who you had seen die and rise again from the dead, you are making a statement that he is the eternal Son of God, eternally present at all times and in all things. It's a pretty big thing to say, isn't it? But Jesus, the Word, is God. There's no doubt about it. And the Word is the life of all things. And that's our theme for today. The Word is life. Verses 2 and 3 tell us the, that the Word was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus was there at the beginning. Life is from life. And at the creation, Christ was there, giving life. Nothing was made without Jesus. Colossians 1.16 records that by Him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. What's incredible is that the word, of course, is the absolute exception to this, to creation. Jesus Christ, the eternal word, was never created. He was only begotten, but he was never made. He always was, he always will be, and he simply is. What a wonderful comfort that is to us, that this is the God, your God, who became flesh, who brings to you life. And yes, as important as it is that Jesus was a participant in the creation of all things, it's even more important the fact that Jesus gives life to believers. We read in verse 4 that in him was life. It's another powerful, incredible statement could spend an entire sermon, and probably an entire sermon series, just preaching on that one phrase. It's so simple and short, and sometimes we might fail to grasp or totally understand the gravity and the weight of that phrase. In him was life. In this world where everything else dies, in him was life. And it does kind of have a double meaning, doesn't it? The first of which we already spoke about at length. The life of all created things came through him as the word. When God spoke, it was the word that he was speaking. And the word created the universe. Secondly, it's talking about the eternal life in heaven for all who believe. Life which comes only through the redemptive work of the word, Jesus Christ, whose perfect life could only be lived perfectly by God himself. Remember that law of biogenesis? All life is from life. The Word brings forth life. Not just physical life, but spiritual life and eternal life. In a place of absolute death, in this world where everything dies, especially in our own human hearts, where it's coated with our own sin, and death is a promise for each and every one of us, temporal death. Death is what we are in our natural state. The Apostle Paul told us in Ephesians 2, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. But you he made alive. Yes, you he made alive. Spiritually, eternally. It's as good as done. And nothing else matters. If you do not go to heaven, nothing else matters. It's kind of a tough thing to realize sometimes. But the things that we say, the things that we do, the things that we own, the things that we earn, they do not matter. And Jesus knew that. And that's why he came and gave his life in order that our lives might be his. He came and took his life and put it among us 
He came and gave his life on the cross so that he might bring life to us, so that it all might matter. Once again, we have entered this season of Advent, a time when we look forward with hopeful hearts to the coming of the Christ child, whose earthly life was birthed that first blessed Christmas night so many years ago. That Christ child whose life was extinguished years later on Good Friday, so that he might bring forth life in you. The Christ child whose life was reignited again on Easter Sunday, so that we too could look forward with hopeful hearts to the life after death, which we know is waiting for us. Jesus told Martha in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And as long as we dwell in this sinful existence, death will still be present and active, but only temporal death. Jesus, the word, gives you life spiritual life now, alive and active in your heart of faith, and the promise of eternal life, which awaits each and every believer. And that is a life that will never end. Because the babe of Bethlehem came once for all, you know that death will never come for you. Yes, the law of biogenesis is just as true spiritually as physically. The word is life. And from his perfect life and innocent death comes spiritual and eternal life for you forevermore, for all his people. He is the word. The word is life. Life today in your heart and life tomorrow in heaven. Glory to the newborn king. Amen.